Meanwhile, at a news conference before Tuesday morning's practice, USC coach Steve Sarkeesian again apologized for his behavior at the Salute to Troy, a reception held before each season for the football team, alumni, and athletic program donors. Sarkeesian said a mixture of medication and alcohol led to his profanity-laced speech and inappropriate behavior at the event. Here's his apology. First and foremost, I'd like to apologize for my behavior Saturday night. I think the moral of the story is this. When you mix meds with alcohol, sometimes you say things and or do things that you regret. And I regret it. Uh, I'm sorry. Steve, because of what happened, do you have a drinking I think it's fair to ask. Do you have a drinking problem? No, I don't believe so. But through Pat and through the university, I'm going to find that out. You know, I, I, I'm going to go to treatment. I'm going to deal with it. I, I don't know if I even need rehab. That's part of the process. There was alcohol in our coaches' locker room after great wins one way or the other. And I don't know if we're very different than any other organization or program, um, but there won't be alcohol in our building ever again. Sarkeesian also said that he would stop the practice of celebrating big wins with alcohol in the coach's dressing room, as we just heard, and that was a mutual decision between him and athletic director Pat Hayden, a source telling our ESPN's Brett McMurphy. Skip, now that we've heard from Sark, what should Pat Hayden do here? Stephen A., I'm going to go a little deeper here, so bear with me. I think Pat Hayden has a much deeper decision to make because the larger issue here, the more I hear, see, feel about this story, isn't whether his head football coach needs to be punished. The larger issue for Pat Hayden now is, does his head football coach need help? Again, I'm speaking from the experience, forgive me for bringing this up again, but I grew up as the oldest kid in a household with two alcoholic parents. My mom finally nearly killed herself in a car wreck, went to AA and saved herself and still goes to her meetings every Monday night without fail because she says she couldn't miss her meeting as a recovering alcoholic. My father went to rehab repeatedly and I went to repeated counseling sessions with him and the rest of the family and he failed and drank himself to death. Now, I'm, I'm going deep here, and I don't know enough of the facts, but, but I've heard the question asked enough times of Sarkeesian, does he have a drinking problem? He says, I, I don't know. So he says, I'm going to get treatment. I don't know what treatment means, but I, I don't need rehab. Remember, Johnny Manziel needed rehab. Johnny had to give up, swallow his pride, and go away for, I'm not sure how long it was, six weeks, eight weeks to get right and God bless him we're all proud of him he's doing pretty well so far so good some people as you know Stephen A can get drunk and repent the next morning after they work through their hangover and say you know what I'm not gonna do that anymore and they can just go cold turkey and maybe they go a whole year before they get drunk again some people just can't handle their alcohol there have been reported incidents involving Sarkeesian in the past where you start to wonder does he have a problem and I think Pat Hayden as his friend he's a, he's a close friend of Sark's as well as his boss is gonna have to make one of those tough love calls here does his coach need more than a visit to the psychiatrist does he need more evaluation than that does he have a problem because it often requires tough love you know some sort of um, it, it requires family members or close friends to, to stage what they call an intervention to say hey you need help and that would have to come from Pat obviously as we keep putting in the context they have a loaded football team ranked eighth in this latest what was it the AP poll mm -hmm. yeah so they're eighth in the country most people think they're gonna win the the uh, the conference going away could they compete for a national championship is his job maybe kind of on the line or some of the USC faithful starting to wonder about him all I know was that was such an embarrassment for the university because that was such a key moment in the season and remember he's going to have to speak to Trojan clubs around the Southland where you are right now the Los Angeles area every week he, he probably is scheduled to speak to another Trojan club so they're going to have to either get him right get him help something's gonna to have to change other than just 
our off the top of the head reaction the other day of, oh, suspend him for the first game. Well, to recovering alcoholics, that that could be offensive because it may run deeper than just that. Your thoughts? <clears throat> well, my thoughts initially are obviously, as always, I appreciate your candor, your honesty, and how open you are about what ailments affected your family. I know how deep that runs for you, so I deeply appreciate, appreciate you sharing that. That's number one. Number two, um, I believe that Steve Sarkeesian, I, th I believe his contrition was genuine. I think that he was sincere. I think that his pol apology was legit. I think he meant it. Um, I do believe that he's sincerely ashamed of his actions. Uh, particularly how it reflects on Pat Hayden and the USC uh, Trojans program. I think all of those things are true. Yet it doesn't change my position one bit. I think he should have been suspended immediately. I think the suspension should be a minimum of two games. I do not believe he should be fired at all. But I do think a suspension is warranted. And to be quite honest with you, my primary reason is because it's bigger than him. That's why. I like Steve Sarkeesian. I met him. I interviewed him. Seems to be a really good guy. I'm certainly not rooting against him. I wish no harm, no negativity towards him. But when you talk about the bigger picture, you have to ask yourself this question. If one of those kids had done that, would they have been suspended? And the answer we all know is yes. When you combine that with the fact that whether it's the NFL or various professional sports leagues, we can also transition that to college, particularly the NCAA, uh, with the way, with the way hypocrisy reigns through that through, 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 through that place. It is undeniable that coaches and leaders of men are held to a higher standard. So whatever standard you have for the actual athlete, you must have plus for the coach because that's the leader. So if you allow Steve Sarkeesian to get away with this, if you're Pat Hayden, I don't want to see you doing anything to a player. As far as I'm concerned, the players can go out there and smoke some weed. They can go out there and drink some alcohol. They can show up at a public event, and guess what? They can do what they want to do. Let me see Pat Hayden do something to them. And watch how you, th you think I've gone off on this show before. You, you, you ain't seen nothing yet. Excuse my grammatical incorrectness, mm -hmm. but you ain't seen nothing yet. If that man suspends one of those players for conducting themselves that way, because that's ultimately the message that you're sending. I have tremendous respect for the reputation that Pat Hayden has built for himself. I don't know the man from a can of paint, but the re his reputation speaks for himself. It precedes him. And I'm telling you right now, if this had been a player, they would have been suspended. They would have been dealt with. So why does the coach get, the, get a pass? Because he's your friend. I don't want to hear all of this stuff about, well, he might have a problem, because if he has a problem, then what you would do is suspend him and insist that he goes and gets some help while he's serving the suspension. Mm -hmm. No, what they're bringing up is the fact that they're all so very close. I'm reading Bill Plasky's column in the L.A. Times, and C.L. Nick, Max Nick is the, head, the, the president for USC. They're talking about how he's got to make a decision about this. My whole point is if it was anybody else, Pat Hayden would have leave it up to him. Pat Hayden would make that call. So because this is your man, this is your boy, suddenly you can't do your job. Oh, yes, the hell you can. You suspend that man. You suspend him because you would do it to the players. Be fair to the players. And I appreciate Kessler and the other boys coming up and speaking for their coach. If it were my coach, I would do the same thing. I would speak up for him. I would support him. But if you Pat Hayden, you can't take that public position. This is egregious. You can't mm -hmm. sit back and do nothing. What kind of a message are you sending? You know good and well if this were a player, you would suspend him. So if you would do it to the player, you must do it to the coach. Mm. He's the leader of the players. It's that simple. I'm not wishing anything on Steve Sarkeesian. I will root for USC. I will hope that they have a great season. I want him to come back and do a great job if he were to get suspended. And I'm not saying that he should get suspended because he's some bad guy or whatever, or his life is rife with irresponsible behavior. That's not what I'm saying. This was a very public display 
of undisciplined, reckless behavior, and dare I say, irresponsible insubordination. It is undeniable. And if that is the case, he must be suspended or, or USC players, you now have the right to go and drink and show mm -hmm. up at public events for the, for the team, for the university with no, with, with impunity. You have nothing to worry about. Go ahead, because guess what? Your head coach can do it. Yeah. Your head coach can do it. So why can't you? And to your last point, I found the concept laughable that Sarkeesian would say, I'm gonna let the players discipline me the way I would discipline them. So he let Cody Kessel, the quarterback, and some of the team leaders say, oh, you, you got to do those up downs or you got to run sprints or whatever. Just give me a break. You are the authority figure on the team. You can't let the players treat you the way you would treat the players well, because you've lost all respect from the players then. I'll take, I'll take it a step further. I didn't think it was laughable. It ticked me off. <laughs> and the reason why it ticked me off is because, excuse me, that's a lie. You know good and well if a player showed up to you know, salute to Troy and everything that was going yeah, on, you, and they that. showed up yeah. like that, you would have suspended them. Right. You know you would have. There's no way that you would show up at an event for USC in public like that as a player, inebriated, nope. slurred speech, all rocking back and forth and, 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 and looking just completely lost. There is no way that a player would show up in public like that representing USC and Steve Sarkeesian would not have suspended him. Yeah. That's my point. Right. That was a lie. Yeah. That's why I don't find a level because it was a lie. Well, you wouldn't just have to run and sprint and up and down to all of this stuff. You would have suspended them. You can't treat this kind of punishment the way you would being late for a meeting or mm -hmm. dropping too many passes in practice or whatever it might be. This is so far beyond that. All I'm saying is you would have done it to the players. You can't give the coach a pass when you know you would not have given the players a pass. Pat Hayden shouldn't leave this up to the president. Yeah. You're the damn athletic director. You're the boss for a reason. Do your job. All right, we'll leave it there. So we both agree a suspension is needed in this case. Obviously, they're on the brink of greatness again. They're number eight becoming that powerhouse that SC is. Hopefully, they can get that all straightened out. We move on to a player who's one year removed from the college game. That's Odell Beckham Jr., who showed out last season, and now defenders are showing up. Will the target on his back slow him down in his sophomore campaign? That's the question. And also Antonio Pierce will join the desk for that conversation. Stay here.